for our first speech slash toast. I am going to call a very special guest up here to the sweetheart table. This gentleman is the proudest man in the room by far, and I have the honor and privilege of knowing him personally. Ladies and gentlemen, the proud father of our beautiful bride, Rachel, Mr. Jim Mahaffey. Over here, Jim. Right next to your daughter, nowhere else, brother. On behalf of Ken and Kathy, Kim and I, I'd like to welcome you again to Rachel and Tyler's wedding. I thought the dance was gonna be difficult, but this is gonna be worse. So uh, bear with me. <clears throat> I mixed a little Rachel in here and a little Tyler. I wanted to say something inspiring tonight because Rachel inspires me every day with all the things she's accomplished in her life and all the people that she's touched. As a special education teacher, she inspires her students, her friends, to enjoy life and laugh along with her with her infectious personality. I love you very much. <laughs> So, this is for T and his friends. <laughs> so when you think of something to inspire you on this time of the year, I think of the NCAA basketball tournament. <laughs> There's a man and a coach from NC State named Jimmy Valvano. In a speech that he gave at the ESPYs years ago, he said the following. Each and every day, you should do, spend some time doing the following three things, but I've, I, I've added one. They are number one, laughter. Make sure you laugh at life. Two, think. Spend some time in deep thought. It relaxes the mind. Cry. I'll do a lot of that. <laughs> Let your emotions move you to tears. And finally, love. Those around you like there is no tomorrow. Do these things every day, and that's a heck of a day. If you do those, these things seven days a week, you're gonna have something special. I hope that Rachel and Tyler inspire each other to do these four things every day, seven days a week, so they can create something special together. So tonight, let's show them as how much we love them in this room from their friends and family and wish them a life filled with good health, happiness in their home, and love in their hearts forever. We love you. And last, I wanna end with an Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your field, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Raise your glasses. Gin Tanti. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you lower your glasses, let's give the proud father of our beautiful bride, Rachel, a big round of applause on a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful toast. Now, before I introduce our next special guest to toast our bride and groom, if I didn't take this opportunity to poke a little fun at the father of the bride, I would be remiss. For those that don't know, for those that don't know, Jim, Mr. Mahaffey, retired as a chief of police of a municipality in South Jersey, West Effer, right? And now he works for the Department of Corrections. So when I go to work with him on Monday, I'm telling everybody he cried like a baby up here. Even if he only shed one tear. <laughs> You're done, brother. <laughs> all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all kidding aside, 
I had the honor and privilege of being the disc jockey at this next special guest's wedding. I would like you to all put your hands together for the lovely, lovely and proud matron of honor and sister of our beautiful bride. Let's welcome Chelsea up to the screen right there again. to be here tonight. I can't hear you. <laughs> you want to use this, not use this? We did? Um, who invited my happies? I don't really know. Um, so, unlike many little girls and sisters, Rachel and I, growing up, we didn't play with Barbies or dream of our wedding days. Um, instead, I used to dress her up in ridiculous costumes and make her pull me around the house like a workhorse. True story office chair, had her like, whip chain, all of the good stuff. Anyway, only now do I realize how fitting it is that she moved to a place surrounded by so many horse and buggies. <laughs> anyway, we grew up and Rachel transitioned out of her Clydesdale days and into her beautiful, kind, hilarious self. Don't let her raunchy sense of humor distract you from seeing the romantic spirit or how big of a heart that she has. So when she met T, I knew that they had something very special. And if you know T, you surely know his undying love for UNC basketball. Um, I can still remember the day he shed so many tears on my parents' back deck after they lost to Villanova. But it's okay. If, if you, you didn't know, know by now, my parents wanted to thank you. They didn't have to get the dead power wash last year. Your, Your tears kept it clean enough. enough. Anyway, surprisingly <laughs> enough, I've had this speech in the works for a while now. Specifically, ever since that time, my parents, Ken, Kath, uh, who else? Justin, me. You know, the whole family, we were in the Outer Banks together, we had a fancy dinner plans. It was on the last night of vacation. We were on a pier in the sunset in the middle of the ocean. And she sat right next to Rachel. And like, ran right into his pocket. And we were all like, oh my god. And he whipped out his credit card and asked if anyone went another round of drinks. And we were like... So I guess the setting wasn't right. You know. Anyway, a few months later, Kath and Kim were determined to make this proposal happen. They put their heads together, dreamt up plans of the surprise proposal on a hike with a like, photographer hanging from trees. And after, you know, they like, all agreed, like, this is it. Like, this is it. Weeks rolled by, leaves turned, trees died, you know. And then Kath just got fed up with the whole delay. So, I mean, remember, you both agreed. Kath wears the pants in your household. We we both, this was established. This was established. Yeah. So, so she, I mean, I mean, it means he, finally, finally got his plans together, together and created the most perfect proposal. And then each night, we celebrated with family, friends, and just as importantly with pizza, and wine, lots and lots of wine. Anyway, so we're so happy to have you and the rest of the Chappelle family a part of our family. Although I do have to say, I'm finally so excited to say that I have another sister. Yes, in the house. Get some hair from. <laughs> anyway. so, so, all joking aside, you two have created such a wonderful and all inspiring life together. I want you to continue to make each other laugh without fail. So, yes, try. Continue to make each other laugh without fail. To support one another when life is difficult and to love each other more than the day before. 
And remember that tonight will fly by. So take a couple moments to look around. Just see how many people that are here that love you both. And know that we all will be here for the both of you for the rest of your lives. Take a couple moments to take in the sights, the sounds, the smell of tonight. And just build the most perfect memory. I will somebody please take a few moments to film Tyler on the dance floor. So we can have blackmail from this night on. All right. So congrats to you both. Thank you. We love you both. To the new Mr. and Mrs. Chappelle. Let's give our matron of honor, Chelsea, a big round of applause. Don't go anywhere, Chelsea. Grace, have a seat. Chelsea, did you say you had a new sister in the house? Uh, we'll save that for later, girlfriend. <laughs> Great job, Chelsea. Great job. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got one more special guest who's going to say a few words, and I guarantee it's going to be entertaining. Let's all give a big round of applause for our best man, Kevin, as he makes his way up to the sweetheart table. Thank you. When I look back on my life throughout the years, I feel very fortunate to have made the friends that I have. I'm still fortunate to be able to see my friends from high school and watch their children grow up. I'm still fortunate to be able to see my college friends on a somewhat regular basis, even though we live scattered throughout the country. I feel very fortunate to have made these friends, and my brother must have felt the same way because he made every single one of them his friends too. <laughs> Besides Joe and Drew, I don't think he made a single friend growing up by himself. Honestly, all kidding aside, while I do feel fortunate for the relationships I built with these friends, it doesn't hold a candle to the relationship I built with my brother. Growing up with he wasn't always easy. He was usually bigger than me my whole life, excelled at sports naturally, and had a full-on beard by age 13. <laughs> Whenever we met people, they would instantly assume that I was the younger brother. While I was his older brother, I never really felt like the big brother. But the best part about that is the way my brother handled it. He didn't mock me, he never excluded me from things. I mean, from time to time, he wanted to do his own thing with only two friends he ever made growing up, but generally speaking, he just wanted me around. Honestly, I don't think he really needed me around. I never made a better at sports. I never gave him any girl advice. I mean, to be quite honest, I don't even know what I brought to the table. But it didn't matter to me. He just wanted to have his big brother there around. And I, and I guess he really didn't need advice when he came to girls, girls because he did a pretty, pretty damn good job of picking this one. one. <laughs> Rachel is one of the nicest, brightest people, people I know, and she, and she rubs that energy off, off onto T. She, she makes, makes him a better, better person in ways that I could being a brother. I can, I can understand the love he feels for her, her and ways he talks about her and the way he looks about her. He always wants Rachel around. I can tell he feels incomplete without her. When, when she's, she's not around, around, he's sad, sad and, and moody, and honestly, kind of annoying. Very, very needy. I, I once heard him say, if it, if it wasn't for Rachel, Rachel, I couldn't even buy my shoes. shoes. <laughs> and, and while that is probably literally, literally true, I think, I think it, it just speaks by how much he knows he needs her in his life. I'm so, I'm so incredibly happy for the man my brother to come, and I can't wait to see him continue the journey to the woman of dreams. I love you guys. Cheers.